Hello everyone, you are welcome to the second episode of the course on Quicksilver series software for beginners. In the first episode, we just did the introduction of the software, what it does and how the interface looks like. So now in this second episode, this is where we will begin the main work and we will start with the first method of modeling. There are three methods of modeling a structure in Quicksilver series. However, we will be taking them one after the other. So in this first one, we will be seeing the first method, all right? So now you click on file and then you can create a new project. So when you create a new project, this is what you have. Then you will see this wizard. This wizard will pops up and then it will ask you to change the default settings of all your stories, okay? So if you wish to do that, you can click on yes. And if you wish not to do that, you can just click on no. So right now I will click on yes. So now this wizard will pop up and then I can fix my loading, fix the dimension of my beams, fix the dimension of my slab. I mean the default settings, all right? Okay, so now the impost load, which is the same thing as the live load. For residential buildings, we use 1.5 according to BES code, all right? So this is 1.5. However, you can still apply your um, discretion. So if you wish to add beyond this, okay, you can go ahead and do that. But I prefer to leave this at 1.5. Then your finishes, you know what finishes is? That includes your tiling, your screening, and everything that can be applied on the floor, which is the slab. So um, the load in kilonewton per meter squared, I will use 1.2. And the partitions, you know, the partitions that are directly on the slab, this is the direct partition that can be on the slab, all right? So this is one kilonewton per meter squared. And then the soil bearing capacity of the soil, this will be used in designing the foundation. So this is 200 newton per mm squared or 200 kilonewton per meter squared, still the same thing. So this is 200, I can decide to put this as um, 150. So the slab and the beam FCU, which is the compressive strength, the characteristic compressive strength of the concrete for the slab and the beam is 25 newton per mm squared. For my steel, I'll prefer to use 14 for my FY, the same thing for this, the same thing for this. And then the depth of my panel, which is the same as the depth of my slab, I will let that be 150 mm, that is the default setting. However, if I want to change a particular slab to be thicker or to be less thicker, you can just change it individually. But when you change the default, this is what it will use directly for all of the slabs once, all right? Then the depth of the beam, let this be 450, let this be 225. The height of the story, let that be 3.15 meter. And then the column section, let that be 225 by 225. And then the unit weight of wall, this is unit weight of block wall. In Nigeria, we use 9 inches block majorly, all right? There is 6 inches block too. But for the 9 inches block, that is what we usually apply when we want to load um, our beam. So the unit weight of a block that has no plastering you know you will plaster one side and render the other side of um of a wall so when there is plastering on a on a block wall this 2.87 will not be valid instead you will use 3.47 all right 3.47 however you can use 2.87 when you know that the block will not be plastered but when the wall will be plastered you can add the load of the plastering to the wall and that will be 3.47 don't forget that this software is developed by a nigerian that is why you see that the default load is 2.87 which is a value for the block we use here in nigeria so you can always confirm the unit weight of block you use in your country and then you fix it to it it is changeable all right then the density of concrete let that be 24 kilonewton per meter squared all right and all of this if there's anything you wish to change you can just go ahead and change them there is more beyond what is here so i will just leave this and then i can go ahead and set the cover to my reinforcement i will click on this so let's set the cover to our reinforcement the cover to the slab let that be 20 for the beam let it be 25 column let it be 25 the part footing you can let that be 50 as well okay I sometimes use 40, but it is better for you to use 50, I think, because when they work on sides, majorly the artisans prefer to work in inches and foot, okay? So whenever you want to provide a particular provision, make sure it is in an approximation of 25 because 25 is equivalent to one inch, okay? So whenever they want to get a cover of 50, they can easily measure two inches. 
it will be better for them to measure 50 than to measure 40 all right so i will leave this for the sake of that and then you can click on ok and then you can click on apply changes so you are going to do all of these default settings regardless of the method of modeling that you want to apply however when the wizard popped up i told you you can easily press yes or no so if you press yes it will take you to the wizard to um change all of those default settings however if you clicked on no and you want to go back there to you know change some things like editing some stuff so you just need to come down here you can see the edit current floor default settings so just um click on this so when you click on this you can click on edit current floor detailing settings all right so it will bring you here and then you can easily um rearrange or re-edit whatsoever you want to um do so right now we'll just um cancel all that so uh now we will go to let this be modeling now we will apply the first method of uh, modeling so what we will do is you just come to modeling options so you click on this drop down and then you can easily create an automatic drawing grid or you create panels and you can create the two at the same time so i'll click on this and then you have this to um you have this it says the grid starts point in the x direction is 2000 and then for the y direction is 2000 what that means is obviously you can see the ruler at the top of this so you can see the horizontal ruler and the vertical ruler so for the horizontal ruler you can see you have x is um 2000 here all right and then here you have your y to be 2000 so whenever this 2000 cross this 2000 that is what this simply means you know 2000 2000 so that's the origin of this um of this grid line so this is where it will begin from the number of grids okay along the x i can make that to be four the number of grids in the y i can make that to be three so right now the interval let this be four thousand let this be three five okay so you can only use this when you have an equidistance um you know an equidistance structure okay however if you do not have an equidistance structure you can still use this approach you will just need to you know remodel you just um you know change the dimension of your panel at the end of the day so right now you have two options you can easily create on create grid so when you click on this it will only create your grid that is the grid lines and everything like that so if you create a grid and floor layout it will create your grid it will create your slab and it will create your beam okay so i prefer to use this so i'll click on this and then i will have this all right so you can see my slab is here which is my panel so you can see panel one panel two three four five and six all right and then you can see my beam the first beam which is beam one you can see it here then i have beam two i have beam three i have beam four beam five beam six and beam seven all right so this is my first beam now the first thing i can do is the name of the floor you can see the floor here it is named floor one so i'll just change the name to um foundation all right foundation so um that is good and you can see the level is zero and then the next story which it will be at the top of this will be at 3.15 okay so that is what we've changed uh, that's what we said earlier so um right now i will just create two stories at the top of this okay i mean two floors i'll create two floors at the at the top of this so i want one to be the normal regular floor and the last one to be the roof floor so what i will do is i will come here and then you click on copy floors so you click on this drop down and then you see two options the first option says if you wish to copy or you want to create a floor so it will just create the replica of this floor at the top okay but it will only create one however if you want to create multiple of this you can use this second option now i want to create two floors at the top of this as i have said so i will be going with the second option so right now i'll click on create multiple floors so i'm here now what i'll do is number of floors you know i need two floors just at the top because they i need two floors at the top so i'll just insert two okay you won't count the this one that is there already this one won't be counted anymore now there is one important information you have here it says make the last floor the roof level yes i want the last floor to be the roof level so what is the difference between telling the software to make it the roof level or not telling it to make it the roof level the difference is that automatically it will change the depth of your beam from 450 to 300 if you still remember in the default settings that we made we told it that it should make all of the floor beams to 
have a depth of 450 and a width of 225 all right but when you tell it to make it to be a floor level it will definitely put it in 300 however if you still want to change this 300 to not something like 325 you can change it it is very changeable okay so um that is just the purpose and then the factor of your load which is dead load is 1.5 and then the factor of your live load is 0.75 because that is lesser you know, we are talking about roof floor here. The only live load you have here is basically the rainfall, okay? Unless if it is a roof that is accessible, you know, there are some roof that it is accept accessible, you can easily go in there to repair some stuff. Basically, you have your wiring inside the roof, you know, all this conduit wiring or whatsoever wiring you have inside. So you can easily access the roof and then, you know, so you can apply the live load of whosoever will be going there, okay? But apart from that, the major live load on the roof is the rainfall and some countries where they have snows and stuff like that that is the um that's the imposed load it is not a dead load that is a live load all right so right now i will just click on copy and create multiple floors so click on this they just click on yes and then click on yes All right, so now you see I have this one. So this is the floor, which is floor two. And then I have another floor, which is floor three. And that would be the roof floor. All right. So right now I can just click on this to close. Then I'm in the ground floor right now. So I thought I changed this to foundation earlier. I think I didn't change it. So um, I will change this ground floor to foundation. It's just um, a name. All right. So uh, the next one, you can give it the name. First floor is not bad. Then this one, roof level, okay? So I prefer to call it roof floor. Does it make sense to be called roof floor? Well, I'll just put it to be roof floor, okay? So um, that is just renaming, okay? So if you check this in 3D, now automatically you realize that the column has come in place, okay? You can see the column. So the moment you transfer that, the column will come in place all right so you can see the column all right so um that is the first method so you can come to view and then you can check this in 3d view so um let me try to so basically you have to work with the skill okay you have to work with the skill so i'll change the skill to you know i want to reduce this so i'll let my skill be bigger because when you want to reduce um the the size of your structure you have to increase the skill okay so i will do all this so um okay so i think this is fine then you can see i have my foundation here then i have my ground floor and then i have my uh, my roof floor all right so um that is very good now um what i will do is i'll just go back to my floor view which is my floor plan then i can go to um my roof floor which is my roof layer okay so what i would do here is let me change the scale here to 100 okay so what I'll do here is, you know, this is my roof slab. Basically, I do not need all these panels, okay? So you can delete the panels on your own. And then better still, you can just come to modeling. So you click on floor properties, okay? And then you see edit current floor. No, sorry. You click on change current floor panels to roof panels, okay? So when you click on this and then just click on yes, just click on yes one more time, um, apply change. So automatically, you see that it will um, delete all of those um, floors. So and then you have you won't have slab, all right. So because you don't need slab at the at the roof floor, but it will just um, you know your load on the on the beam will still be there. Okay. So over here, where you have um, your foundation, you can decide to delete all of the beams and all of the slab if you do not need them, all right? Because it might just be if a part foundation or okay, a part footing where you just need your column to apply part footing to. So this is basically how you are going to um, create your model in, in quick civil structure. So this is how you are going to create your model in quick civil structure. This is the first method of creating your model okay so however if you wish to change any um if you wish to change anything for example this beam you know no let me select this beam you can see this beam it is two span beam it is two to five by 450 so i can just cl um, click on this or you might not even click on this just change the breadth directly here it is two to five you can change it to let's say 230 okay and then depth 
let me change it to um 600 okay that is how you can go ahead and change your element okay so this is the first method on modeling with quick civil um series software in the next video i will show you another method where you can change that so um let's say this panel 3 you wish to um change it so um you can just click on it and then you click on this particular portion and then you just scroll up then you can see the depth of this particular panel is 150 and then the height is 35 all right so let me try to change the width the width is 4000 let me change it to let's say um 4500 okay then you will see that it will um you know it will extend outward so let's say you want to have a cantilever over there you can see it will just come over um it will run over that beam and become um, a cantilever so in the next video i will show you another method you can use in modeling your structure in quick civil series so watch out for that thanks for watching